Hi guys, this is Whitehead King, and today I'm going to be teaching you IPO in Blender because it's a very, very important feature, and almost every single Blender animation that you'll ever find involves IPO. In fact, all of them. So, yeah, a uh, very important tool. So, IPO is simply keyframes. Uh, for example, you can set it to material, so if I add a material to, well, it's already got one, uh, but let's say I want to change the intensity, so from here, I right click, press insert keyframe, somewhere over here, drag it down to zero, insert keyframe, now when I go somewhere in between, you're going to see that if I just go frame by frame, you're going to see the value uh, decrease um, in this little uh, box there that's just some simple IPO but the main IPO that you know most people refer to as IPO is movement probably um, so let's get started so let's say I want to uh, you know make this cube go up and do a little twirl as it does that uh, that can all be done very simply using simple commands in the IPO uh, settings I guess um, there was an IPO editor but I don't know if they have it on this I never really tested it Oh, they do. That's nice. You can go to this little animation thing here, but uh, it's kind of rubbish, really. Let's just find something else. Rubbish. There we go. Uh, default thing's fine. So let's say I want to make a nice hundred frame, um, yeah, hundred frame animation. Uh, well, I'm pr I thought I wasn't pressing one. Then I was pressing some uh, that button where it's got it's the one next to one. It's got some weird lines. Never really. Kn I've never known the reason why that's there. Anyway, so, going to front view, which I already am in, and, um, as I say, I want to move it up, make it 12. Simple. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to frame 20, mm, that's when it's going to start, I'm going to press I, location, rotation, meaning it's going to change the location and the rotation. It's actually, uh, like, lock rot, that's what it says here, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, let's now go to frame 70 let's move it up and instead of rotating it by hand like that uh, because what will happen there is the uh, what you call it the uh, blender will just find the shortest way to get to it uh, from where it originally is so I'm going to just move it up again so I'm going to move it up here press N to bring up this little window and just change the rotation on the Z axis something like that and now I'm going to press I location rotation now when I take a look at this animation from a different angle camera view might do that no that's too close up um, you press alt A and now you see it do a nice twirl and come up although that twirls quite fast so that's a simple thing for iPod but let's say I um, I've got a fine rotation thing I just want it to move to the right as well, so it goes woo woo along with its little twirl. That's simple. You don't really need to change the rotation as well. Uh, just go to whatever frame you want, 50 for example. Let's move it over here, uh, there, and just press I location. So now what it's done is, as you can see, when we've got um, a keyframe with both of them, they're both yellow. When we go to a frame where uh, um, it's not got any keyframes, they're both green, meaning that that value has got keyframes but just not on that frame. When I go to frame 50, it's only got a location frame, so only that one shows yellow. So now, when I press Alt A, you can see Blender's calculating the frames in between those, uh, these key points basically. Um, it's, uh, and also, uh, as I say, because it's calculating it, Believe it or not, you might think that frame by frame gives it tiny little values, but look, frame zero, uh, the rotation is at zero and all of them. Next frame is gone up two. That's you know, so it, it that just shows how evenly Blender can split it up to make it. I mean, you know, when we look at this animation, it looks really choppy, but when we speed it up, it looks just fast. So that's just a simple IPO thing there but as I say you can do it with materials you can do it with uh, the compositor for example let's say I want it to be blurry at the beginning quickly set that up render this 
yeah, so let's say I want it to be blurry at the beginning. I would add my blur node. Stick it in. Set this to fast Gaussian. And let's say I want it to be 10 at the beginning. Um, at frame 17. Let's say I want it to be 10 by 10 here. Then later on, I'm going to insert keyframe here. Skip to some later on point and change it to 5 by 5. Insert keyframe. So now you can see if I go here, it's set to 8. So that's just how powerful this, uh, I, well, the IPO editor in general is. Um, so yeah, hope that really does help you because uh, you're not going to get anywhere in Blender without IPO. So thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe, and goodbye. This has been Wirehead King, by the way. So if you like this tutorial, then my name is Wirehead King, and I want you to subscribe because. I like collecting subscribers. Anyway, comment, rate, subscribe, and goodbye.